over the many uh, weeks that I have been contemplating what kind of a painting I wanted to do for my first demonstration painting on uh, my YouTube channel, The Art of It All, I saw this image repeatedly on the internet and finally uh, thought that I could do something with it, might make a fun painting. And uh, it's been my experience, the more time you pick, the more time you spend picking an image and working on it, uh, the, the, the better your results are going to be when you finally get to the point of doing a painting. So what does my working process look like? Well, first of all, I've got a variety of different places that I store photographs on my desktop. These are all of my personal photographs, and out of these, some uh, important paintings have been done. For example, if you go up here, these are copies of some of my finished work. Here's a, a file right here of all of the different stages that I did in a painting of a self-portrait. Uh, that originally image came from this file here. Uh, I have another folder here with broad categories of images that uh, I've collected, like it. here's California, here's uh, Redondo Beach. Um, there's all kinds of different uh, uh, categories here, broader categories. But then when I get to the point that I'm focusing in on a specific subject, I, I, I go online and I, I, download, I select and I download onto my computer and put in a folder a whole bunch of images that I can look at. They give me some ideas. I have no intention of using the image exactly the way it is, it is here, especially since it's not my own work. But I don't worry about copyrights because there's no money involved and I'm going to make so many changes in this thing when I get done with it. It's very unlikely I could ever get uh, anybody uh, upset or a problem with it. So this image right here, the one that we were talking about, is the one that I thought I could do something with. Might make a pretty good painting. And how do I do that? What's my first, what do I, how do I arrive at at engineering that thing so that when I get finished when it's suitable for a painting. Well, here's what I do. I start out and I put the images that I'm concerned with in Adobe Photoshop Elements. This is a photo suite made by, uh, as I said, Adobe. And it's, it's not a real expensive program. I think you can buy a brand new version of this for 89, 100 bucks or something like that. And of course, it comes with the Adobe, um, the Adobe support website that comes with it that's got all of their stuff on it so if there's another program you want to purchase or you want to try out it's right here in this folder you can use that so once i've got the images in here over the many years that i've used photoshop elements i've developed techniques to help me re-engineer these photographs these images to make them suitable to my own artistic sensibilities so in this particular case what i did was I took all that background clutter that you see there out of this image and left myself just with a single sailboat. This is an image now that I think um, has potential. Uh, it's something that I could work with. Uh, it's not suitable for a painting yet, but I'll show you what I do next in the process of getting an image ready for that. I create a folder and I, and I start out with a single image, which is this one. You're familiar, you've seen this now, and then we do a, a first uh, application of engineering and, and editing in Photoshop Elements. So you can see here, this is what we've ended up with, but this is, as I said, still not suitable for um, a painting. We've got a lady here blocking the face of the uh, helmsman, and uh, we've got somebody looking away, that doesn't do anything for the image, and a red hat, somebody here looking down in the water or something, Anyway, so this needs some work. So we'll, this guy right here, we'll call him Fred. And we're going to take Fred, and I'll show you what we're going to do with him. We're going to take Fred out, and we're going to put somebody else in. Boom, like that. So we went into Photoshop Elements, and we moved Fred into the position of the helmsman. He looks really good in that position. Uh, it's, it's really a much better looking photograph, I think, with him there. And then I I, I had seen this image earlier, and the lighting is perfect on this guy, and that dramatic look on his face as he's looking forward toward the bow of the boat, I think is stunning. So that make that's a good edit right there. Those two things right there really improve this, but there's still something else that we need to do with this thing. Let's back this back out here and take one more crack at this. Boom. Now, now we've got the crew engineered to the way that it can make a painting for me. We've got this wonderful arch 
of these this arch that leads us over toward the helmsman. We've got this lady that I just put in here. The the lighting on her is also excellent. So all of the all of the details that are needed for a a complete painting are here. But there's still something that we can do with this to see if we can improve it in any way. I mean, the sky is the limit in terms of your own creative ability. So I'm going to try a few crops and see if we can uh, have another view of this. So here's one with just the front of the water cut out. We still have the jib sail. Uh, we've got good, good composition here. We've got these lines leaning back this way. We've got the arch. We've got the scenery in. That's a pretty good crop. That could be used for a painting. I also consider this jib sail out here. These guys are tacking is what they're doing right now. And that's running against the wind. So they're on attack. And this jib sail, sometimes they're really beautiful paint jobs uh, and stitching on these. And I was thinking to myself, that's something that might be a nice addition to this is to repaint this jib sail. Okay, so now we can back this thing back out. Okay, so here's another crop. As soon as I got this one opened up, I know this is, this is not going to work. This is not what I want. Um, it's, it, it's just not the right developmental uh, um, elements in the right place at the right time. It doesn't work. But putting in here so we can see an example of something that is not suitable, I don't think, for a painting um, is, is a good way to illustrate what doesn't work. But here's another crop. Now, this one is an interesting one. This one we've got no sails in it at all just the mass shows we've got a much more concentrated view of this crew up here we've got some of the sky and some of the scenery in the background I'm not sure if this will make a good painting or not but it's it's a it's an excellent view but one of the things that I noticed in an earlier in an earlier crop was when I pulled this thing in like this uh, where it showed a little bit of the sky this this begins to have another another crop of this that I didn't try until I was demonstrating it to you but I also like this this has got real possibilities in terms of uh, of a potential crop really cropping it in but keeping the sky uh, this this has potential uh, and that's one that I'm gonna uh, continue to have some consideration toward now so where do we go from here well we still got to decide what medium we're gonna paint the picture with what size it's going to be and what, the, what surface characteristics of and we'll pick that up in another uh, in another vi video in just a little while in the last video uh, we just finished shooting a little while ago we were talking at the conclusion about what kind of a support we wanted to use how big it should be how rough or smooth it should be and what medium we were going to use uh, some specific ideas come to mind immediately uh, for an image that's got as much detail in it as that <coughs> sailboat. You're going to need a, uh, a support that's got very fine tooth, uh, not, not a hot, a hot um, cotton duct. It's got a lot of threads in it and it's real rough, nothing like that. Uh, probably something like a Belgian, a really fine Belgian linen. And in fact, I ordered some supports like that off of Dick Blick, and I wasn't paying attention and didn't realize that they were back ordered to the end of the next month. So that's an awful long time to have to wait. And so I, I, I don't know if I'm going to wait that long or if I'll find a more suitable uh, support to meet my needs. But the first consideration is we don't need we don't need something as smooth as would be used in a film industry like a, a glass plate uh, for in, in camera shots but something very smooth so that when you touch your brush to that edge around that face or around that stanchion on the, or that, that cable on that boat you've got a very fine surface to drag that brush across that doesn't create a lot of resistance uh, for your work so that's the first thing to consider and uh, the second one is the most next most important one is what medium now, acrylics is a very popular, very vibrant looking colors, uh, great archival quality, uh, but you have to work fairly quickly relative to some of the other mediums that are out there. Certainly, it's not as fast as 
you know, like transparent watercolors, that's, that drives considerably faster. Uh, but still, you got to work pretty quick, and there are extenders you can use, but uh, that's one consideration. Another one that isn't uh, considered these days as much, but has great historical credentials is uh, tempera paints. Tempera paints have outstanding archival qualities. They last hundreds of years if they're on a reliable support. They have great color selection. You can get them non-toxic. They, um, they have um, the ki kind of characteristics where you can thin those things out so they're as transparent as, as transparent watercolors, or you can use those things in an opaque manner that's got the kind of covering characteristics and drying characteristics of a, of a, a medium like um, oil paints or acrylics. Very opaque. So that's something you might, you might want to file that away on your list of things to do someday. Uh, they're great and for a couple of other reasons. They don't cost a lot. And there's a fairly significant investment in, in just about any medium. If you're going to get artist grade paints, um, I mean, this student grade is a good thing to start out with. But as time goes by, you're going to want a, a, a better uh, set of paints probably. And uh, those tempers um, reduce the cost of getting something that has, as I said, the same painting characteristics as something like the Mount Everest of, of paints, which is our next consideration, is uh, oil paints. Uh, as far as its um, archival and historical credentials, there's nothing else like it. Uh, it's a kind of a medium that when you're, when you're alive, <laughs> you can't even give your paintings away, but you cut your ear off and a uh, hundred years later, your paintings are worth a hundred million dollars. Of course, you know who I'm talking about, good old Vincent Van Gogh. Uh, oil paintings um, are a little bit more uh, of a learning curve with oil paints, but they make a really great medium. And we could talk, we have a lot to say about oils as we move forward. But another one that's really outstanding is uh, pastel pencils. Pastel pencils can be sharpened to a very fine point, some of them, and a decent point on the others. If you look on that shelf up behind me back there, you'll see that there are, I think, seven sets of pastels up there. There are a big box of new pastels and um, Rembrandt pastels, which are, one is a very, fairly hard, uh, prism pastels and new pastels, and um, um, uh, the Rembrandts are much softer. Uh, they're both very good for covering larger surface areas or for underpaintings. And then there's a five or six sets up there of professional grade pastel pencils. As I said, they can be sharpened to a very fine point and they're excellent for detail. They've got enough colors. You can't mix your colors like you can with most uh, painting mediums, but there's enough colors in, a, in, a, in that many uh, uh, sets up there that you can do any paint, paint job convincingly with uh, pastels. And one of the fun things about them is this. You, you can be holding six, six or ten of those pencils in your hand working on some of the elements of the painting and when you're finished for the day whatever your work schedule looks like you're there an hour or you're there five hours you set them down shut the light off and you're out of there I mean, oil paints on the other hand when you get finished painting with your day's work there there's a considerable amount of work after you've turned your camera off or after you've put the caps back on your tubes You've got to take out the solvent, get those brushes as clean as you can, take them to a water source, get yourself a good soap. Uh, one uh, made specifically for oil paints is preferable. And wash your brushes really good and get all the color out of them completely. And one of the reasons for that is, is as time goes by, you're very likely want to be willing to spend more money on your brushes. And you can see on that shelf back there, I have a huge collection of brushes. And some of them are Kalinsky Sable. And they can start out at nine or ten dollars just for a very small brush, and go up to two hundred and fifty or three hundred dollars, depending on how big a brush you get. I don't have anything that large, but I've got a hundred dollars or more invested in a single brush up there. So getting them completely clean when you're finished working for the day is an absolute necessity. So those are the things that we want to consider as we dial in our focus on that sailboat image. Which one of those crop versions are we going to paint? How big are we going to make it? Probably something under 20 inches. For, for instructional purposes, uh, I think that's a good size. And maybe when it gets done, it'll turn out nice enough that 
I, I don't throw frames on everything that I do, but it might turn out good, good enough to throw a frame on it and hang it up here in my art studio. So we'll continue working toward uh, the next developmental phase is going to be doing the drawing. And I'll, I'll have more to say about the techniques that I use for that as time goes by. So anyway, thank you for joining me again on The Art of It All, and we'll see you again in our next episode. Have a great day.